Welcome everybody. We're back again. This is the Extreme Beginner Series. We're having a great time. We're going to do a coastal scene here, a beautiful ocean, uh, distant mountains, a boathouse, a beautiful uh, house along the shoreline here, some boats, some trees, a little hilltop here. All of this is really a lot of fun to do and we're, we're also going to show uh, how we can get some beautiful color mixing techniques where we can mute this whole painting and kind of make it a really beautiful kind of grayish uh, cool feel with just adding some black to our mixes and, and um, a little bit of black to each of our colors. So we're going to cover all that and how we're going to do a bit of the glazing technique. So we're going to cover the glazing technique here on um, how to pre-wet your paper and then start working in your washes on top of the uh, painting. So a lot of great stuff we're going to cover here all the details I'm going to cover for you so you don't have to guess on anything. You'll know what we're doing the whole way through the painting. And uh, we'll get started then. Okay, we just saw the finished painting. We're just going to do our sketch, uh, preliminary sketch first. Let's get our rectangle in here. So I'll just make a, I'm going to use a darker pencil. Get the rectangle here. Okay. And then we're going to do our distant, distant hills first. So that's about two thirds uh, up from the bottom of the page, or about one third down from the top. Is approximate. Just the light. And a distant mountain or two back here. So we could maybe a little indication of some clouds. I, I want to make sure I put some marks in the in the sky for some clouds. And this is the extreme beginner series, of course. So we're going to keep our our palette, uh, the Prang Oval 16 palette. We're going to stick with that, and uh, we'll get some really beautiful color. But we're going to try to maybe make this. Uh, kind of a more simple uh, color scheme. We'll, we'll cover that in just a few minutes or so. I just want to get my sketch in here, so I still want to keep working on this distant hill here. I can do a little bit of shading there. A little bit of shading here too. And maybe the light's coming from here, so I'll put my, my light insignia here. That'll be sunlight. And maybe we'll just have some bits of grass fields maybe in the distance here. Maybe there's some sand here. Maybe this is out west, some sand and some uh, grass areas. And I think we're going to um, start to work on the foreground now. So maybe I'll maybe we'll do a bit of a plateau here. With some maybe a, some small trees here. Mm 
and some grass and weeds, things like that. Then I guess maybe down here we can make a, maybe this is uh, some water down here, we'll have maybe a, maybe we'll have a, a small cabin down here, so we could just make a cabin like so. And we kind of keep it simple, just like a basic uh, gable roof. windows there and then we'll do some shading on this side so this is a hill up here and a little area up here the top of the hill here and then down here at the bottom of the hill we have this interesting cabin maybe Maybe it's a, a small house along the water here. Maybe there's some water down here. So we'll just, maybe we'll make a, a boat dock here. Maybe a boat there. And then if my boat doesn't come out great, I don't know if that, I'm improving this, of course. This is just an you know improvisation of a drawing. I'm just kind of going with my standard, you know, kind of fun seascape style painting. The boat isn't, the shape of the boat doesn't look so good there. So I'll just, I'll, we'll do the, I'll do the dock again here, the dock shape going out like that. And then maybe here I'll just do like that, and then maybe a, a sailboat like that, just a shape like that. There'll be some reflections. Shoreline over here, maybe. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> and uh, let's see what else we have here. So some shoreline here, water. We have a little bit of land over here. <clears throat> Small house here. Something over here we need to do. Let's improvise something here. What could we do? Maybe another house here. Maybe a fishing shack down here too. Maybe this is more of a, a boathouse maybe. And a dock too here. A boat, yeah, boat here.
All right, so we have some interesting subject matter here along the coast. We have some boats, some fishing shacks, boathouses, and interesting water over here. And we'll have some uh, fun here. Let's do some washes. Let's take a break though. You'll always hear me say take breaks if you can when you're working. Um, I think it just helps when you um, rest a little bit, stretch. Um, if you're standing up when you work, you, you can maybe sit down for five minutes just to relax a little bit. Um, if you're sitting down while you're working, you can actually stand up, stretch a little bit, walk around, maybe, um, you know, kind of just it refreshes the, the, the mind. When we come back here, we can uh, start thinking about the painting process. So right now we did our sketch, our drawing. Um, that's a lot of concentration. That's Once that's completed, we can take a little bit of a rest. And when we come back, we're thinking just about the painting now portion. We'll get some washes on the paper. We'll probably do a little bit of... Um, a little bit of glazing technique mixed with the a la prima technique. So we're not really going to be strictly doing the glazing technique. We're going to kind of maybe mix and match. Just do a little, uh, improv you know, improvising with our water uh, color painting techniques right now. So, but we're going to mix up some really beautiful colors here. And uh, maybe again, keep it a, we'll keep it a simple palette um, of colors and, and we'll see what happens. So we'll be right back. All right, now we're going to get into our painting portion, and uh, we're going to use our standard brushes that we like to use for extreme beginners. We have our synthetic brushes. They really work great. They uh, hold a little bit less water than um, sable or uh, natural hair brushes, uh, squirrel hair, things like that. So it's a little bit of an advantage. It's you're less likely to have too much water on your paper and flood things out and have um, things go. Um, uh, you know, have th have things go wrong as far as adding too much water to the to the painting because sometimes too much water can really start to infiltrate other areas and start to ruin other washes you've done uh, previously as you're working through your painting. So these are you know some square brushes. I have a round brush. This one comes with the uh, Prang set. So this is a round brush, and I'm using just fresh clean water. And then maybe I'll have one more brush. Maybe I'll use my uh, Simply Simmons too as well. So between these brushes here, we can use these. These are fine. And I'll I'll start out with this one. And but before I start to add any water to the paper, I'm gonna do some uh, pre-mixing here on the palette. So I'm just going to use some very familiar colors I like to use here. Uh, warm, you know, orange, that's my warm, and some red, cadmium red. And then we have some green, it's almost like a viridian green. And some blue, some cerulean type blue, and some French ultramarine, and then I have some black up here. Black is really nice. This is going to kind of make it for an interesting... I'll put some black into all these colors too. I'll just sort of mix that through. We'll see how this goes. I think it'll have a good look though. Kind of mix everything all together like that. And uh, I'll start to take some fresh clean water up here in the sky. And I'll put that fresh clean water on, not everywhere, but you know, here and there on the sky. I'm hoping you can see that where I'm adding the water. And then this gives it a good effect of some really good wet washes. And then I'll take this and do the same thing. I'm going to get some fresh clean water here on the paper. And 
not everywhere. I'm kind of just putting on some of that water here and there. We'll start at the top and work downwards on the paper. So this is just going to be a dampness of the paper down here and more. I added more fresh clean water up here to kind of add little bit little bits of puddles. And then we'll see how we can we can add in our sky wash. Which which is a little I'm mixing everything here. I'm gonna mix up all the colors on here. I'll use some greens and blues here. And I think what I want to do here is just kind of see how we can have fun with the colors on this painting and not focus so much on the the drawing so much like the mountains or the boathouse or whatever, you know, let's let's try to have fun with the colors here. So you'll see that I'll start out with those grayish looking washes. And then I'll start to go in with um, maybe more of a warmer kind of color across here. Again, more some more blue. That's like the cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue here. Then I'll maybe pick up a little bit of the um, black and uh, orange. And I'm just letting letting things happen here. A little bit of brown, orange. A little bit of green. And we'll work on these details down here, the boathouse and the um, shack down here. We'll, we'll work on those after this dries a little bit. But I think we have a good wash now over the whole paper. And you kind of saw how we just let things happen, let it flow, the paint. And we don't want to overwork this and start doing anything now over the top of this until it's completely 100% dry. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to let this dry. This here, we still might have a little bit of time. We can add a little more, maybe some black, some orange, some brown, a little bit of green. We can get some dark. Tonal value on there, like so. And then maybe here too. For the roof, 
but you can kind of see it's still pretty wet, so that's why we, we're probably better off just doing this part of the hill over here. Because that's really dark and it's at the corner of the painting, so it's not going to really give us a problem at all. And I think that looks good. So let's let this dry. That's all it is now. Um, we got that whole preliminary first wash on. And we did leave some white paper. And we didn't cover the whole paper with water. We just covered, we covered the sky with a good amount of water. We saw how we got some on there. So the water, then we puddled it up a little bit. We added some extra fresh clean water up here. And then once we did that, we also worked some more fresh clean water onto the water here along the ocean, coastal area, mixing our colors and just let everything happen, let it float on, you know, down the page. And then we can just let this sit now and let it dry and we'll come back and we'll finish up doing some of the trees, work on, we'll work on that boathouse here and the uh, shack. And I think we'll have a completed painting. We'll do the mountains too in the distance. Okay, so we'll take a break, uh, let this dry. I might use a blow dryer now to blow dry this off quickly. Um, you can let this dry naturally too. It might be something where if you have to do something for a few hours or maybe overnight you can let it dry. It's up to you. You're the artist. You'll figure out um, how you want to let your paintings dry. If you want to use a blow dryer, fine. If not, you can let it naturally dry. But definitely let it dry really almost where it's completely dry. The paper should settle and be a little more flat. <clears throat> right now my paper is a little bit buckled. Not too much, but it does have a little bit of a waviness to it. So I always usually can tell when the paper starts to dry, you'll see it get a little more flat. Again, it flattens out and the buckles kind of dissipate a little bit. So that's a good way to kind of have the feel of knowing when it's dry. And then that's about it. So we'll come back in just a second. Okay, we are getting started. We're going to paint the uh, distant mountains and hills, uh, as well as some of the details in the foreground here, the uh, boat shacks and um, boathouse and some trees, a little bit of shoreline. But for the most part, we're in really good shape. We have most of the washes on already now. We're just going to do some final areas here. Let's start out with the distant hills. So we're going to do, again, we'll go in with some black. We have some uh, orange and brown in there. Maybe we can go with a little bit of blue just to kind of give it a, a good mix here. And I'm just going to go in and with my round brush. And then maybe I'll lighten up a little bit. So I start up off with maybe some heavier paint here and then as I come this way maybe I lighten up a little bit make it a little bit lighter the tonal value there like so maybe we go with more of a, maybe some blue and green And I'm just following my pencil lines here, and that's all we're doing. We follow our pencil sketch that we did when we started. And I think it's good. We're going to use all the same colors. That's why I really didn't clean my palette here. I just want to keep using the same colors that we used in the first washes. And I'm using this. Simply Simmons brush. It's got some good pointiness to it. And the same thing again. I'll use some darker dark here. It'll lighten up the uh, wash here. Then I'll mix in some orange there too. 
some green. Trying to mix all the colors in here. And once it lightens up, you'll see those colors a little more. They'll be more noticeable, the different mixtures of color. Bits of uh, dark tonal value here and there. And sometimes when you add some darks, it almost uh, right into that wash that's already wet there. It kind of gives it like an, an effect of maybe some trees in the foreground, or in the you know closer to us. Like there's steps back into the picture, so you have some maybe some dark trees here, then you have the mountain back this way maybe. So that, that really works to a great advantage if you can remember to maybe just add a little bit of uh, washes or different colors to your wash as you're working and kind of think of it as, well, how about I add some darker darks here at the bottom of this mountain and make it so that it looks like trees a little bit and then you can Add in some of that dark, and you'll see. Maybe it, maybe it'll look good, and, or maybe it'll just blend in. You have to kind of it's trial and error. And then over here too, we can go back and add a little darker dark there. Maybe this could be another bit of hills here. That looks pretty good. And we'll go across the paper like so to get some marks on the paper. I usually uh, get some mix on the brush, dry off a little bit of the paint on a tissue or a sponge, and this way there's not too much water on there, and then you can kind of get some dry brush effects. Like, like this, you can get some lines, like so. Scrub on some. some color. And we're just having some fun. I'm just trying to do like a waviness of like a, a wave, like this. some more brown, black, a little bit of green. I'll do, the, I'll do the roof a little darker here. I started off a little bit lighter there, but let's go with the darker dark here. I think that looks better. Let's see, there we go. That looks better. And then we can do a nice bit of shadow under this side.
and we'll come, we'll go over here. And then we can infuse in some color, orange, green. You can go straight right into the palette. Not necessary to mix everything all the time in the palette over here. You can just go straight in and get some color. Same thing with this over here. We can add in some orange there, a little bit of green. And some kind of sand feel, orange, orange color. There we go. And I think we're almost completed. Let's get in a few of these uh, tree shapes and the boats here and the docks, and I think we'll, we'll be in great shape. Let's let's try it out. I'm going to try to use my um, praying brush here. It's got a really good point. So let's try to do some details with that. I'll start out over here with the trees maybe. Brown, black, some green. And I'll dry off the brush here on the tissue a little bit. Let's see how we can do it. Let's see how this looks. This looks pretty good. There we go. So we're going to do some some brush first. Let's do the brush first, maybe. That tends to be if you can get some kind of like some brushy weeds and things, and if you get that in first. It, it kind of makes it easier to do the trees, I think. It, you know, it sort of like gives you a start. So we have a start with some of these brush, bushes, twigs, a couple splashes. And when we have those started like that, then we can sort of... It takes the pressure off of maybe having to make perfect, you know, branches and trees coming up over here because we already have this here some of these other twigs and weeds and things we have those started in it and it takes the pressure off a little bit anyway because we kind of already see we have a lot of stuff going on there it's almost like uh, having a bit of a support with uh, And then sometimes if we go with a lighter wash on some of the tree limbs, then we can go back and do a couple little dark additions to that. And I think that's fine. I don't want to overdo it. Sometimes that can cause a problem if we start overworking things too much. So I'll spl splash on a few more details here. Like so. Then I'll do a couple more scrubs along here just to get some marks on the paper to make it look more interesting than just leaving it maybe a couple of little scrapes here and there like that. Then another couple of darks maybe. 
just a little bit of some weeds, things like that. This over here would look good too. That kind of pushes the uh, that house back a little bit down on that embankment over there if we have that bit of like this. So if we do a little bit of kind of makes it a little mysterious and it gives it an interesting look of the house being down at the bottom of this hill and this is the hill up here it works it looks good and a little bit of light on the top of that hill there Okay, now we'll just go in and keep working our way over this way. A couple of windows, nothing too fancy here, a door. Another couple windows there maybe. And we'll do the, the dock over here, some of the pilings, just the final details here. Doesn't have to be Some reflections. And now's, you know, the point at the point now, we're at the point where we're finishing up all the details, and these go a little quicker. These go a little quicker. Because they're, it's at the point now where the final details are not so much. They're kind of these are smaller details, so we don't have to spend too much time fussing over them. We can just kind of get them in quickly. There's the sail, the mast of the the boat. We'll, we'll put a sail on too here. Maybe we'll make the sail kind of an orangey look. Kind of a canvas feel to it like that. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a red roof here. So we could add a little sparkle of color here and there. Two at the end of the painting, though, we do this. This way we can kind of step back a little bit and look and say, oh, wow, yeah, we can add a little sparkle of color, maybe a little red, a little yellow. We have a lot of interesting colors here. But yet at the same time we didn't, we did a lot of really like just mellow, um, kind of like grayed down colors um, with the black added in there to give it a nice soft feel going all the way across the picture with the sky colors and the water. And then we went in and did our darker darks over the top. So basically this is like a glazing technique. It is, a, we did use mostly 90% is the glazing technique, but we did also um, do some a la prima work here and there. And then we could add in some shadows. Like you can look at, step back and look and say, okay, what well, all oh, we could do some shadowing here. Like in the water here, the house. That needs a shadow there. And then the boat. That could use a shadow there. And this too. 
the lights coming from this way, across the picture this way, so we would get those reflections and shadows. And I think that's complete. We have completed a, a wonderful, fun painting. Uh, the sketch, the drawing in the beginning was not too technical. It was pretty much a straightforward drawing. We have a beautiful feeling of distance in the picture and, you know, we have the foreground here, the middle distance of the ocean shoreline. And then as we get back and in, further into the picture, out a mile or two, you can see the distant mountains in the far distance. So um, I think this overall gives you a great feel uh, of a coastal scene. I hope you enjoyed this. And I always mention if you um, like these videos um, here on my channel, please give me a thumbs up. And also feel free to uh, subscribe. Subscribe is uh, the buttons right down uh, below on the right hand side of your screen. Subscribe, all it really does is YouTube will just let you know I've made a new video the next time you uh, open up your um, phone or your computer, your laptop, and you open up YouTube, it'll just show you my video, the next video that I'm creating. Um, so just wanted to um, thank you again for coming by and having a fun time. And so we will actually uh, be back soon. And I'm wishing everybody happy painting and enjoy the watercolor journey. It's really fun. Um, we're going to be doing much more videos now with um, the Extreme Beginners series, as well as we're going to be doing the rest of our um, normal routine. And then we're also going to be working in figures. We're going to be doing figure painting, but that's going to be on my Patreon channel. I'm going to eventually start my Patreon channel. I have it already started, but I just have to get everything up and running. And then we're going to have our own, maybe like a smaller group of us are going to do more intensive um, figure painting, which I hope some of you will be interested in doing that along with me. So. Uh, until we get uh, together again, uh, happy painting, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.